crap, that might not have been the best thing. And I can just see that same kind of weird brain process sitting in the back of the car. Person turns around, he's like, just kind of moons at him just because he doesn't know what else to do. Okay, but also I will say, again, you know, Joe has said this before. We've reiterated again and again and again. Just because he didn't like his family doesn't yeah. mean he killed him. I it's know. It's not yeah. outside the realm of possibilities to say he yeah, did not like his family. He okay. just inherited a and bunch of money bring it yeah. up. and he was happy. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. That's a gross thing. It feels icky to say. <laughs> yeah. But it's right. totally possible. Just because he was happy his family was dead didn't, doesn't mean he killed his family. Uh, yeah. That's just, no. I don't remember Devin managing to skeeve herself out in a long time. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I, I, he had a lot of like anti-character witnesses. Uh, one of the family's employees said that Jeremy was, quote, quite a nasty piece of work, unquote. They had a farm, and one of the farmhands reported that Jeremy was cruel to the animals. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Neville Bamber's assistant, Barbara Wil- Wilson, said that uh, Neville said to her once, quote, I must never turn my back on that young man, unquote. And he also told her in, in great confidence, not long before the murders, that he well, he felt that his life, his life might be cut short, and that he thinks it would be Jeremy probably a shooting accident but he felt like there's a real possibility that Jeremy might be killing him so that's another reason that this is kind of suspected well maybe uh, some psychiatrists have, have diagnosed him as being a psychopath although I have to admit other psychiatrists have said he's not yeah uh, I, I read a really interesting thing um, because this case came up on Reddit recently, and I was I reading saw a Reddit thread. post about that. Is that the one where there's that mega long post about summarizing the whole thing, then about 13 comments underneath? No, this one was uh, what what case are you 50 50 on? Oh yeah. Like, what do you like? It could this person could be just as innocent as they could be guilty. And one person said, um, you know what the thing is, is that I like I just don't like Jeremy Weber. Like <laughs> he yeah. gives me the creeps. And I'm scared that I think he's guilty because I don't like him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really good thought. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times we're not willing to admit to ourselves that because this person gives me the creeps doesn't necessarily mean that they're a murderer. But it also doesn't mean they're innocent. No. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. This one's a hard one. Are they? I guess are they the only two people? Because I. I kind of think there's a there's a third option There's a third here. party. There's a third party, but no, actually, I wanted to say one thing about Jeremy. Even though I, I think there's no evidence whatsoever except for one thing, which is the lights were out. When the popo, when the popo got there, Jeremy got there, the lights in the house were out. If Neville had gotten up to make his phone call, he would have turned the lights on. Now, I guess it's conceivable that if Sheila went to Rampage, she would have turned the lights off before she shot herself. But she really, may have done the rampage in the dark. Well, no, but Neville would have turned the lights on yeah. to make his phone call. Mm-hmm. So he would have turned the lights on. And I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't have shut the lights off and gone straight back to bed when he's got a loony <laughs> psycho no. with a rifle ro- roaming the house. But I guess he could have turned the lights off to try to hide from her. But he doesn't Maybe. seem like the kind of hiding guy. He no. was a big don't dude. Seem like was, hiding yeah, guy. he was a big guy. I, uh... A big, strong, yeah, I mean, he's 61 or something like that, but he was still a, he was yeah, a he big was still guy. a vigorous shape. guy, yeah. Yeah, it's not as if he was a weakling that was going to hide behind a chair. Yeah, no, I think and it's, if you want to, like, uh, if you're running to get your shotgun or whatever, you, know, you want to, like, have the lights on so you can see what you're shooting at. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's conceivable that uh, if Sheila did it, that after she got herself all cleaned up and everything, she would have shut the lights back off. And well, then if she, killed herself. I guess, if she saw the cops arriving, mm. because it's conceivable and actually likely, given the amount of time between when the cops showed up and when they finally went into the house, that she was still alive when they showed up. Yeah. That she heard the sirens or whatever, saw the light. and thought, okay, if these lights are on, they can see it. They can see me. Mm. I'm gonna turn these lights off. Or yeah. even that she was the female body. She played dead in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Right? Because they were hanging around. They were she waited in, yeah. until they walked away, creeped upstairs, turn, you know, keeps the lights off. That she would have been trying to, I don't know, hide, preserve herself, something like that. Mm-hmm. Or even that she had a, some sort of episode and realized what had happened and turned the lights off because she didn't want to be around it. She didn't want to see it anymore. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff is possible. I'm just, I'm just saying that's... But a, I agree. It's, that it's, is, it is hinky. The, the, the lights, uh, yeah, the lights are a little hinky. 
And of course, it's, it could have been somebody else entirely. It didn't have to be necessarily just Sheila or just Jeremy. Somebody else. Could I think have been. we all, do. We all think it's the same. Do we say on the count of three who we think is the third person? What the cousins? The ah. I don't think the cousins did it. No, actually, I've seen that. Uh, I think the cousins called Wolf. I think that the cousins they cried wolf. Did they cried wolf. They cried wolf after staging some things that we see in the photos that weren't there before. Well, exactly. Like this whole, the whole silencer thing. I think that somebody yeah. went, hey, this got some blood on it. Wham, 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 wham. Whacking it on the thing, uh, the uh, mantle. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'll take this home. Hey, I know you brought that silencer home because they did. They didn't leave it in the house. They took it to their own home. You should call the cops. Oh wow, that's great! Like I could, they all got gobs of money out of this whole thing. Yeah, well, they did. Joe and I were actually talking about the fact that um, there's also the possibility that Jeremy may have not done it, but uh, we didn't mention. He might have engineered it. Uh, yeah, we didn't mention that. The dinner conversation of the night was, Hey, Sheila, you're not doing so great. Remember how your sons were in foster care for a while? We're going to do that again. Yes. They, she probably did not that. react super great to that. And under the guise of, Oh, I heard rabbits. So I'm going to go kill them. Yeah. Jeremy, you know, loads the gun, leaves it out instead of putting it away in the cabinet where it belongs, regardless of his intent, and says, Hey, Sheila. On the way out the door. That's not going to go super great for you. And there's there's a gun there, so uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so so he said it so all up. See ya. He right? might have, or you know, knew. You he know, might have said. Know, but we all have siblings. We all know how to push their buttons, right? That he would have said, "Oh, this is the button I need to push right now to just drive her." Yeah. Crazy. By the way, uh-huh. if this happens, your ex is going to end up with a kid, and you're never going to see him again. And mom and dad are going to lock you up. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Mom and dad yeah. are going to get you committed. Get you committed. Yeah, and yada, absolutely. Yada, yada. So she yeah. thinks, okay, my only option is to kill. She calls Jeremy. He says, "All right, turn the lights off. You know, whatever, right?" I, I yeah. be, option. Turn off the lights. Mm-hmm. I'll Clean be yourself in a up. I'll be over there uh-huh. soon. Comes with the police. She goes, "Oh crap!" Shoots herself. Realizes she's hooked. Uh huh. Yeah. The cousins then realize, okay, uh, that didn't go super great for anyone. But Jeremy's a kind of shady guy. We don't think he deserves the money. We think he's kind of a jerk. We and we're so, pretty sure he did this. We'll we're see what sure we can he do. Did it. So we'll see what we can do. Fabricates, you know, just a few bits of key evidence. Yeah. And uh, he's in jail for the rest of the life. And this whole thing is really hinges on a few key pieces of that all came out that all happily came out after the cousins brought those well and you know if the girlfriend had never come forward this guy would have never served a day exactly it was her testimony only so yeah i I think uh, if that's true they rolled the dice and they got lucky so they said oh hey uh julia we hear things aren't going super great you are you sure that's what? Are you sh- are you sure? Cause here's uh here's a couple thousand pounds that says uh, and a no jail time that says that maybe maybe that's not what Jeremy said to you. Well, and, you know, for her, she might have realized it was the only way she was gonna roll sixes. Is yeah. She had to. She just had to turn over on him yeah. and lie. I so I'm not willing to necessarily say that anybody is free of guilt, but I also I don't. I think the evidence. The evidence I, points to Sheila. I think it, it points to does. Sheila, but then, it you does. know, it's, it is. It's genuinely one of those things but where I think I'm like 55, 45 percent. I'm, I'm a little more, I, I'm a little more two-thirds to one-third. Uh, two-thirds, I think, it's Sheila. Although I, I do think it is a possibility that, because after all, you know, when you've got a paranoid schizophrenic in the house, is it really a good idea to leave a, lo- leave a loaded rifle no, sitting No, particularly the when they're... They're, probably having some sort of episode because they've received some bad news. Yeah, there might. So there might. And have been, their uh, their medication is lower than it normally is, and then the, your family sprung some. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it doesn't make him a murderer. It just kind of means he he pulled a sneaky one. That he's kind <laughs> of a crappy person. <laughs> See, and I'm I'm 75, 25, and yeah. my 25 is I'm 75 that she did the killing. Mm-hmm. I'm 25 that the police screwed it up so badly, and the cousins meddled so. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. that he was, you know, he was the patsy. Yeah, he was. I, I, yeah. I think that it's. I'm, yeah, but he's most likely he's innocent. So that's Especially, what we think. Yeah, when you th- see things like the two phone logs, that, that it appears, and damn it, it's so. 
too bad that they erased those tapes. Yeah. You know? I yeah. Mean, holy crap. And burned all the other evidence. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and when it comes right down to it, um, Jeremy Bamber would have been infinitely better off if his, if his girlfriend had rolled over on him right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, all that evidence would have, made, would have maybe been preserved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so it's too bad for him. And she didn't, I'm sure, mean to do him any favors, but uh, she she didn't, I mean... I, what's the word I'm thinking of here? Uh, she didn't mean to do him any harm? Well, she did, obviously. She didn't mean to put I mean, him away from none life? Of it was, none of it was deliberate. She didn't like, oh, I'm going to wait exactly a month because I know 28 days... It wasn't planned out, yeah, no. No, it wasn't at all. But anyway, the whole thing is just uh, really a shame... I mean, I kind of hope he did do it because he's been in jail now for... 30... Hey, 30 um, years. Yeah, mm-hmm. almost 30 years, you know, so I kind of almost hope he did do it because if he didn't do it, then, oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. All right, well, if you guys have any, uh, you guys have any other thoughts or know. theories no. or anything? Yeah, I think that... Uh, I don't really know what I think. Jeremy Bamber may just be innocent. I think it's possible I think it's likely actually <laughs> uh, anyway let's, uh, let's I'm just gonna do a little um, little bookkeeping here and to wrap this thing up of public service announcements yeah 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 you, you want to know what our website is I'm sure you probably already know but in case you don't our website is thinking sideways podcast.com uh, it's a place where you can listen to episodes you can leave comments so you can check our links to uh, various informational stuff uh, you can also find us on iTunes, subscribe, review us, a nice review preferably, <laughs> or, uh, you know, it's not required. As far as streaming, it's anywhere. There's lots, there's millions, billions and billions of, uh, <laughs> of no. streaming services. Well, maybe not, yeah, but there's a bunch of them. Uh, we are on Facebook. We have, uh, we have our, our page and we also have a group, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And so like us, follow us. Yep. Like us uh, and follow us. Join the group. Do not friend us. Don't friend us. We don't do anything on our regular page. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what else? We are on the Twitter, and we are thinking sideways. That's without that G. And, of course, we have an email. It's thinking sideways podcast at gmail.com. And the subreddit. Don't forget the subreddit. Oh, yeah. We got a subreddit? It's called thinking sideways. Yeah. Just, yeah. Fi- just, just find us. Yeah. They, these guys always look at me like I'm crazy. No, I know you've been championing championing but these subreddits. It's getting there. There you go. It's getting yeah. there. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and last of all, we uh, we're on Patreon. Patreon is like uh, it's a, where you go if you want to pledge a certain amount of money per episode. Um, it's like Run for the Arts. It's totally optional, uh, but if you feel like doing that, if you want to support us, uh, because you know, actually, uh, God, we just paid the bill for our hosting for the it's year. Really yeah, good. Oh my we, God. we appreciate all that help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, wow. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Patreon. Yeah. I think keep going. <laughs> yeah, patreon.com forward slash thinking sideways. And that's it. So, anyway, everybody, uh, next week we'll be back with another hard hitting mystery. Probably. We will. Yeah, maybe. A right. couple of them. Yeah. yeah. All right, bye bye. Bye, guys. Thinking Sideways is not brought to you by Canadian Conquistadors. Instead, it's brought to you by your local cat and or dog shelter. That's right. We're back on that again. And, uh, hey, we got an email from our listeners, Chris and Kathy. They told us a really, really great story about their dog, Stewie, that they adopted from a shelter. And Stewie worked out great. Another wonderful success story. And another reason for why you should get down to your local shelter and get yourself a cute little four-legged furry friend. Uh, cat, dog, doesn't matter, but uh, they're out there, they need homes, and you know you need them more than they need you even. So get down there now. And if you can't adopt, then you know give money or give your time, volunteer. So get down there now. Your little four-legged friend is waiting for you. Thank you. Hey there, and welcome again to another episode of Thinking Sideways. I am Steve, of course, joined by... 
Devin. And Joe. And once again, we bring you a mystery. Dun, dun, dun. A really scary one this week. Well, actually, in some ways, this one it's is kind of scary. scary. Yeah, there, there's some bit. there's some uh, moments during this one. Man, yeah, it's gonna make you think twice before you do a certain thing. It's very true. Yeah, it's true because this week we're gonna be talking about a mystery that spans 14 years and literally scared the hell out of postal customers in New York for a long time. I think that should be the tagline of our. Show well, scared the hell out of postal customers? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, makes you think twice about doing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to give away the game by saying what that thing was. I know. Quite yet. <laughs> yeah. But actually, you should be scared of doing all sorts of certain things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of certain things that are very scary. It will get you killed. Yeah. This yeah. very certain thing is dealing with your mail. Yeah. Opening a package. Because we're going to be talking about the zip gun bomber. You guys have heard of that, right? Of course you have. Actually, I think a lot of people have. It's the ubiquitous <laughs> this <Actually, gun> bomber. <laughs> I, don't, not. I don't know. This guy was like, he never got quite the publicity as the Unabomber got. I was going to say, you think of bombers, it's the Unabomber. Yeah. Zip gun bomber. Yeah. I Those think are the only two I know. Yeah. wanted to say that they felt that this guy was envious of uh, those other the big A bombers. Industry. Yeah, but maybe. I don't know that that's really the case, as we'll find as we go through this. Yeah. Um, but I do want to uh, say thank you to Wesley, because Wesley is the one who suggested this story to us. Oh, thank you, Wesley. And you wish. Very well played. Uh, <laughs> but as with a lot of these kind of stories, it's one of those where you're like, oh, I'll read the first link, I'll read the second link. Four hours later, I guess I'm covering this story. Yeah. <laughs> My next week is like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whoever the zip gun bomber was, uh, was an individual that sent explosive packages to people uh, in the New York area and was never caught. Mm. And so let's let's tell this story. Disclaimer here. I think we're going to probably be using the he pronoun for the bomber. Because we a usually very good default point. to that. Uh -huh. Not because we don't think women can also be bombers, but oh. just because... Dudes tend to like to play with things that go boom. Dudes are like the ones who kill the most people. Uh-huh. Sorry. Uh -huh. Not all men, I know, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway. The majority of. Yeah. So yes, I will no, end up I, using the he pronoun. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I think I think we have to say he or she every time. You could say they, yeah. singular they. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I'll let you do that. Kay. Okay. Okay, so our story begins uh, on the 7th of May, 1982, when 54-year-old Joan Kipp received a package at her home in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Joan had been a... Er, I think Joan actually think she was, still was. Still was a guy. Yeah, she still was working. So she was a guidance counselor at a local school, but she was getting ready to leave for the weekend with her husband to celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, when a package arrived in that day's mail, it was addressed to her, and so she opened it, and lo and behold, inside was a cookbook. Nice. Wow. So, uh, so lucky. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and I'm, presu okay, so presumably this is hardback as will come to make sense soon, but she believed that this was a Mother's Day present. And was she, she was a mother? She is, she okay. was, she has, she had several children, okay. uh, at least one son and one daughter. I don't know exactly how many children she had, Okay. but uh, she believed that it had to be a present for Mother's Day. So she pulled the pulled it out of the box and she opened the book. I'm guessing the plan was to see if somebody had written on the inside of the cover like people do for for mm. books that are gifts. I and guess somebody had actually. Well, I was just gonna say I feel like every time I pick up a book I open it. Just you Just know. To at least look in the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I was presuming it being that she thought it was a Mother's Day gift, that there would be some kind of writing. But you're right, she probably may have just automatically opened it. Yeah. Unfortunately, when she opened the book, it made a loud bang noise, and Joan discovered that she had been shot. Because mm. here's the, the gut. Yeah, because here's the thing. The book was actually a booby trap, and when she opened the front cover, she sprang said trap, and the book literally shot her. What? Yes. Yeah. Um, Joan was taken to the hospital, but unfortunately she died several hours later. Uh, the report, and this this is one of those things with these kind of stories, the reporting varies. So 
Some just say that she was shot in the torso or abdomen, and other places say that she was shot in the heart. Which See, is technically in the abdomen, I guess. Which technically yeah. is in your torso. I, I think she was probably more shot a little lower down in the gut. Just because when you open, if you're going to open a book, you don't hold it up like heart level to open it up. I mean, right? unless you're short, short or you're sitting at a yeah. table. <laughs> there's, yeah. a whole, there's a whole bunch of variables, and we'll talk about that, like how things get held when they're open. Well, I mean, here's the thing, though, is like this is really the reason that we need better gun control because a book should never be able to go <laughs> out right. to the unwitting victim and shoot it. Well, that's the whole thing is that... Uh, it's you know, really just... Uh, well, because, you know, I mean, they, you know, you can't... A book cannot be connected convicted of a felony. So, yeah. I mean, how can you know if the book is a criminal or yeah. not? You can't know. Yeah. yeah. So I agree. Yeah. Okay. Are you done with that? <laughs> yeah. All okay. Right. <laughs> Good. Okay. So the, uh, the police, of course, they investigate and they're stumped. And so they start investigating 